we will look into Enoch at the end of our teaching after we establish the fact that Eliyahu is the second end time witness, the Navi of Yahweh, who will also lead the two houses of Israel through prophesying in the Great Tribulation. Let us find out about these two men of Yahweh and their translation. Let's begin with Eliyahu and also let us rely on scripture to give us the big picture of what really happened to Eliyahu, who is the second witness. I said he is. Remember who was with Yeshua on the Mount of Transfiguration? Was. Who was there? Eliyahu and Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe died. Yes, he did. So he couldn't be one of the two witnesses because the witnesses have to remain alive until the second coming. Right. I said the two witnesses have to remain alive yes. until the second coming. Yes. I, I said the two witnesses okay. have to remain alive. It couldn't be Moshe Rabbeinu because we read in Devarim 34 that Yahweh buried Moshe with a kiss on the plains of Moab right. and all Israel did mourn for Moshe Rabbeinu right. for 30 right. days because lo kam bi Yisrael navi ke Moshe od. Yes. That's never risen in Israel a prophet. Like Moshe. Like Moshe. Amen. And the Jewish people have a saying about the great Rabbi Maimonides, Rambam. No, Not Rambam, some of these Ephraimites, they, they, they try to pronounce the name <laughs> Rambam. Sounds like some guy in a Hollywood movie. You can't do the It's Rambam, not Rambam. Right. Rambam. Moshe Maimonides, a brain surgeon in the 1200s in Spain. He did brain surgery without instruments. Would you like to try to match that? Uh, no, so among the Jewish people, there's a saying, from Moshe to Moshe, lo kam bi Yisrael, od Moshe. From Moses to Moses, there had never been and can never be another Moses. Rambam. Look up a little bit about Rambam in Jewish history. <laughs> He's doing stuff now that the people who are doing hip replacement think that's technology and modern medicine. See what he was doing. Brain surgery with, almost with his hands. Successful. <laughs> Not a joke. Medication. And, and, and what do they call that? Anesthesia. anesthesia. There was no anesthesia. Tremendous, tremendous, incredible, and a theologian of the highest order. Who, P.S., promoted plural marriage in Israel. Oh. So let's move on before I get in trouble and I get off topic. <laughs> First Kings 18.7. Well, that's not bad. No. Moshe Rabbeinu promoted it and Moshe Rambam promoted it. So I don't care what your, how, what your emotions are telling you. Uh -oh. If Yahweh called you, do it. If Yahweh didn't call you, don't do it. You're crazy. <laughs> Better to jump off the, the Golden Gate Bridge. Then go into plural marriage if you're not called. If you can't say oh man, say oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Uh oh. You better be called, and even then you need a fire extinguisher. literal. <laughs> First Kings 18.7. Oh boy. Here we go. First King. Melachim Aleph 18.7. As Ovadia was on his way, Eliyahu met him, and he knew him and fell on his face and said, Is that you, my master, Eliyahu, Elijah? And he answered, Ovadja, I am. Go tell your master, see, Eliyahu is here. And he said, What have I seen that you would deliver your evidence into the hand of Ahab, Ahab, to kill me? As Yahweh, your Elohim, lives. There it is. There is no nation of Ahud where my master has not sent to seek you. And when they said he is not here, he made the Ahud and nation take an oath because they did not find you. And now say, go tell your master. See, Eliyahu is here. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from you that the Ruach of Yahweh will take you somewhere I don't know. Stop. You know who Avadia is, Chris? Who's Avadia? Avadia. Does that sound familiar? Avadia? This is the same Avadia of the book of Avadia. They were contemporaries. Eliyahu and Ovadia were contemporaries. And Ovadia says this. He says, the king is chasing me. And it will come to pass that when I leave you, Eli Eliyahu, the Ruach of Yahweh will pick you up and fly you away and take you somewhere I don't even know where you're going. Meaning, when Eliyahu went into the air, in Second Kings, that was not the first time, Bruno, Elijah had a habit of disappearing mm. in the Ruach HaKodesh. Wow. Oh. Wow. Exactly. Obadiah well, said, look, I can't take my eyes off of you because as soon as I do, you, you're going to wind up somewhere else. The Ruach of Yahweh is going to take you away. 
So the idea that he went to heaven in 2 Kings 18 as a first time event is not accurate. Eliyahu Hanovi always had the habit of disappearing because the Ruach of Yahweh will take you somewhere that nobody can find you. The Ruach of Yahweh will take you somewhere that no one can find you. And so when I am calm and I tell Ahab that he cannot find you, he will kill me. In other words, I know I won't be able to find you. You with me, Darren? Oh, yeah. Because you have a habit of disappearing. And when you disappear, no one can find you. So please don't disappear on me, because if you disappear on me, and I, what am I going to go back and tell King Ahab? I was supposed to tell him where you were, and I was supposed to get, and, and what is, he's going to kill me. And when I go and tell Ahab that I cannot find you, and that he cannot find you, he's going to kill me. But I, your Evan, have feared Yahweh from my youth. Oh. Was it not told to my master what I did when Is Isabel killed the Nevi'im of Yahweh? How I hid a hundred men of Yahweh's Nevi'im by fifty in a cave? I fed Yahweh's Nevi'im with Lechem and Mayim? I am like you, Eliyahu, a servant of Yahweh? And now you say, go tell your master, King Ahab, look, Eliyahu is here. He will kill me. I hear a good amen. Amen. Yeah. And Eliyahu said, as Yahweh Sebaot lives, there it is again, the oath, before, before, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to him today. Okay, what did Elijah say, Shoshi? I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't want you to die. You're a servant of Yahweh. You hid Yah you hide Yahweh's Nabim. You don't you don't forsake your responsibility before Yahweh. And so Elijah said, I'll be there for you. Obadiah. I do have a habit of disappearing. I have a habit of disappearing and no one else can find me. But because you are a servant of Yahweh, and because you preserve the people of Yahweh, he says, I will show myself to King Ahav today. Even though I have a habit, or Yahweh has a habit, of lifting me up in the Ruach HaKodesh from one place to another so that Ahav and Isabel and the servants of Baal who want to destroy me cannot destroy me. And the Ruach of Yahweh is going to translate me right now. But for your sake, Ahab, I mean, Obadiah, I will appear before the king. Are you getting this? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Eliyahu, just like the man of Yahweh, who swore in the name of Yahweh as Yahweh lives, promised he would manifest himself. It came to pass when King Ahab, Ahab, King Ahab, saw Eliyahu, Ahab said to him, are you that troubles and disturbs Israel, you <laughs> puppet, you pipsqueak, you? It was him that was troubling Israel. It really was. That was the tea calling the kettle black, Amen. wasn't it? Amen. Moshe Konachowski, it's you who are not leaving things up. We're happy in our mandated serial monogamy with a wonderful 80% divorce rate and the other 20% of married couples are hanging on by the skin of their teeth. And out of that 20%, 10% need restraining orders to keep the loving, monogamous, serial, mandated state husband away from the wife to protect her so she doesn't get two black eyes. But it's you, Moshe. Why don't you just go back to doing what you were doing hundreds of years ago? You're disturbing Israel. You're troubling Israel. Why'd you have to write that book? I hate that book. <laughs> Not only will I never read it, I hate that book. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, it, it ain't the NJAA that calls oh. half of Israel Gentiles. Right. It, ain't, it, 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 it ain't the UMJC that, that, that says that non-Jewish believers uh, 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 could never be Israel, that troubles Israel. Uh, it's not the, the, the messianic movement that says it's a sin. They follow in the errors of rabbinical Judaism. It's a sin to mention Yahweh's name instead of teaching, proclaiming, and shouting Yahweh's name. It's not them who are troubling and withholding living manna from Israel. No. It's Moshe Konachowski. You're the one who troubles Israel. Because you're teaching the people of Israel Yahweh's true name. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yahweh. It's Konachowski. You're the one who's causing trouble in Israel. Now, I'm not trying to compare myself to Eliyahu, but I, believe me, there are times I don't mind being translated. And I'm not even talking about being translated for, from English to Spanish. I'm talking about a translation away from my enemies. 
Just too heavy for you, Daryl. Beat me up, Scott. No, no. You want me to